Hello everyone and welcome to the first video on my channel and the first video in a series on learning Essential Craft 3. This is a Minecraft mod that was recently added to the FTB launcher as part of the uh, Horizons Daybreaker pack. So it's just now getting access to a wider audience and it's new to me, uh, probably some of you have already played it, but if you haven't and if you're getting into this Horizons mod pack, um, there's not a lot of information about this mod. Uh, there's practically no information, in fact. Uh, I think it's because the mod author is Russian, so there's only a few videos about this uh, in Russian. So the uh, amount of English information available for this mod is, is very, very sparse. So, and in fact, I don't think there's any videos out there that are actually just strict tutorials on this mod. Uh, on this mod. So. Uh, that's what I wanted to do, is make a series of videos trying to explain this mod, because it can be extremely confusing, and I had to learn all this my, on my own. So let's get started. Uh, so welcome to Essential Craft 3. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do to get into this mod is make this research book, Tier 1, and uh, that is made very simply with three books, two ink sacks, a feather, rose red, cactus green, and a lapis. And that gives you research book with uh, basic knowledge, is what it says. So if we take this and open it up, we have our book of knowledge. And there's one category over here. And you'll be able to upgrade this book later. And it'll add a whole bunch of categories. And each of those will have subtopics. And it's, 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 there's a ton of information in here. So if we look at the first topic, is this uh, basics of magic. Um, and it's got a bunch of tabs in here. And I think the intent for these is to get, start in the top left and then read down a column and then come up to the top of the next one and read down that column. Because um, if you read left to right, then things get confusing really quickly. Um, but the first topic talks about the book, and funnily enough, it tells you how to make the book in the book. Um, and then there's just a lot of description about it, and then there's um, instructions on how to make the second tier of the book. And uh, then you've got you know general information about new stuff from the mod, um, new things that you can do, Lots and lots of recipes. Um, I'm not going to go through the book in the video because you can do that in your own time. Um, I'm going to try to distill the information I got from the book down into you know helpful topics. That um, well, th this is how I learned the mod basically. Is I just kind of started from the very beginning and then and then built things uh, as I went and learned about them as I went. And so that's kind of how I'm going to present this series of videos like that. So, anyways. Um, the first thing you'll probably notice with this mod is these elemental ores. So these spawn, there's five colors of them. Uh, they spawn everywhere in the world. Uh, they usually spawn in veins that are really pretty massive. Um, and each one of these corresponds to an element. So you've got air, earth, water, fire, and uh, elemental, which I guess is all four of them. And uh, when you break these blocks, they drop a number of these gems. And that's also affected by the fortune enchantment. So if you have a pickaxe with fortune, um, mine these things and you get generally more than just one of these these gems come out of it. Um, this last one, the elemental gem, you can actually make from the other four. So you see if you when you break the other four you get earth, water, flame, and air drops they're called. Uh, you combine those in, in any uh, way, it's a shapeless recipe, you get uh, four elemental gems. And those are probably the most important. Uh, the second most important is the flame drops, so I like to collect as much of those as I can. The other three I hardly ever use. So water, air, and earth, if you want to, get a stack of them when you start off, and then you probably will never need more than that. Um, interestingly enough, you can actually make these things if you really want to. I mean, they spawn in very big veins, so you're unlikely to need to make them, but if you do, you can, um, and it's kind of nifty. So if you have this configuration, where you have four moss stones around a grass block, and uh, you throw a slime onto it, it turns into this. And you break that, and you get look at that earth drops come out of it. So when you have uh, this configuration with a slime, you get earth drops. When you have this configuration, four sand around a block of quartz, and you throw a gunpowder on it, you get uh, air drops. You have this one, uh, four waters around an ice, you throw a clay on it, and you get water drops. And if you have this, four lavas around a netherrack, and you toss a blaze powder at it, uh, you get flame drops, and <laughs> unless they burn up in the lava like that. <laughs> and this seems like, I don't know why you would waste your blaze powder just to make flame drops when they're so abundant in the world, but um, 
you know, if you're swimming in blazes, I guess, then have at it. So, um, those are the elemental ores, the first thing you notice. And the next thing you might notice is that uh, the lapis lazuli ore has been changed as well. So it doesn't look any different, but when you break it, you get an additional component uh, called mitraline dust. It's this green powder stuff. Um, so again, if you you know break it, you see there was two things that came out of it, and um, I got 13 mitraline dust and six lapis. So you get a lot of mitraline out of these things, and this is also affected by the fortune enchantment. So if you have a, a fortune enchanted pickaxe, you really get a lot of mitraline. And uh, this mod pack also adds dense ores, so you have dense lapis, and uh, you mine that sucker, and you get a ton of these things. So see now I have 42 mitralines and 23 lapis. Um, I, I got one time I had a fortune I think three pickaxe and I hit one of those dense ores and I got like an entire stack of mitraline from, from one ore. Uh, so you get tons of this stuff. You won't use it right away but it will become important later. Um, so hang on to it. Um, put it in its own chest is what I did. Uh, just keep it somewhere off to the side. We'll use it later um, in a later video. And uh, now that you've you've mined some of those elemental gems, you got some mitraline, um, got all the new ores and stuff, you're, you're already ready to uh, do the second tier of the research book. Um, so you see, this is the recipe for it. You have a research book with four of those elemental gems, which we saw earlier, and four of these elemental cores. Uh, the way you make an elemental core is this. You have one elemental gem in the middle, four stones, and four iron ingots and gets you one elemental core. So you need to make four of those. A pretty simple recipe. And that, that generates this uh, research book level two, which uh, you can see the first one just had basic knowledge. This one adds this MRU tab. Um, so if we open this, the, the book saves where you last were, so we were here a minute ago. So that's kind of nice if you're looking up a recipe. Um, but anyways, now we have two tabs. This one, MRU and Matrix. And for whatever reason, this usually starts on already in one of these devices. I, I don't know why. You just hit the up arrow, and it goes to the the uh, overall thing. So you can see there's lots and lots of topics here. And this is where this mod really starts to get confusing because they introduce a lot of acronyms. This mod is all about acronyms. The first acronym is MRU, which you saw. Um, that MRU is basically the magic energy. Um, so whenever I talk about this stuff, I usually will say energy or power instead of MRU because that's what it is. That's how it acts. Um, then, and we'll get to the other uh, acronyms, I suppose, a bit later. So this is all about power. This tab is all about power generation and power storage mainly. And then there's a few um, devices as well that you can build. But anyways, we have a number of tabs here. And again, I think you're supposed to read from top left down the column and then down the next column and then down the third column. Because if you go across, like it, nothing is in order. So it's really confusing. Um, and a lot of these, uh, especially like for this, this is one of the producing devices. It, it makes other things it's called radiating chamber. We'll go over that in a minute. Um, that has a tab right afterwards. It says radiated items. You go to this and this is every recipe that this radiating chamber can do, plus some extras. So the book is extremely handy for um, recipes. And again, there's another thing called the Magician Table, which we'll go over in a second. And then right underneath that, there's Magician Table Recipes. So uh, very, very handy to consult the book as often as possible. All right, so now let's go over a couple of those uh, items that we saw here. So the first thing you're gonna need to do to get into this mod is some way to generate power. And the very first way to generate power, or MRU as they call it, is uh, using this soul stone item, which is this thing. And you make that, you have to have access to a whole lot of emerald, unfortunately. So it, it does make it a little uh, difficult to even start this mod. Um, but you first need a block of emerald, which is the course made by uh, nine emeralds. And then to get a soul stone, what you do is you take another emerald and uh, you toss it on top of the block. Oh, there it goes. And uh, now uh, it popped out a soul stone, this thing. So if you look at the soul stone, it doesn't really have any information about it. Uh, it just says what it is. So what you need to do is when you're holding it in your hand, you right click and uh, then it links it to you. So you can see now there's a bunch of information. So it's tracking the MRU matrix of my character 
and uh, it's got 6108 uh, UBMRU Energy, um, another acronym. I don't know what UBMRU stands for. Um, MRU stands for Magical Radiation Unit. That's in the book. There is no mention in the book whatsoever of what UBMRU is. So I got no clue what to call this. Uh, I, I guess I'll just call it Matrix because it's your energy, your matrix of energies or whatever. Um, so, there, yeah, so there's that. Um, it says your matrix twists with neutral energies. Uh, that, that refers to something called balance, which is uh, key to the later part of this mod. We're not going to go into that in this video, but I, I might even make a, its own video uh, for balance, but uh, we'll see. The, the point is we have 6108 uh, matrix energy. And the way we get energy um, in our matrix is by killing things. So I was going to, this is actually kind of funny, I was going to spawn a, uh, a pig and, and kill it just to show you. And when I was looking through uh, the NEI menu over here, I found this spawn failed pig. And it had, I don't know what this is from or where, it, where it's, uh, you make it, but uh, check this thing out. That's kind of horrifying, isn't it? <laughs> but anyways, we had 6108, you remember? Now, ugh, jeez. And when I kill that thing... I'm up to 6366. So I think the amount of uh, matrix energy you get d is is uh, depends on what what you actually kill. Uh, so you probably get a little bit from um, pigs and stuff, and then you get more for zombies and, and stuff. And it, it also mentions in the book if you're on a multiplayer server and you kill another player, you absorb all of their matrix energy. So that that actually works out pretty nicely. And when I was on uh, my multiplayer server, I uh, somebody else that had nothing to do with this mod I just asked them if I could kill them real quick and so I I killed them and I got all their energy and it doesn't matter to them because they're not using the mod but uh, it's it's a quick way to get energy if you're on multiplayer so anyways um, we now have our soul stone and we know how to charge it oh and one other thing I wanted to say is that emeralds they only spawn in extreme hills biomes or you can get them through villager trades and um, I did not know that, and it took me forever to find emeralds. So you have to have this particular biome. And on my multiplayer server, I found a villager that sold things. He sold emeralds, and uh, I guarded him with my life because he's my only source of emeralds for a while. So you might have to do that. Um, and now that we have our uh, soul stone, we need a machine to use that energy that we uh, have in our matrix. And that's called this matrix destructor. And the matrix destructor is your power source. Uh, the way this is made is this recipe, and it looks a little, it's a, a bunch of new stuff, and this is all in the book. So I'm going to go over some of these recipes, but if you miss any, uh, if I skip any, it's all going to be found in your research book. And uh, I apologize if you can hear that in the background, that we, i got a storm moving in. But anyways, um, we've got four iron frames, two of these heat rods, uh, one elemental core, which we saw earlier from the research book, and then one MRU collecting device and one MRU linking device. So all of those objects need to be made. And here's how you make those. Iron frame is uh, four elemental gems and five iron ingots. So that's fairly easy. You get four frames, so I need one of these recipes to do that uh, for this uh, particular building. Uh, heat rods require six flame drops and three iron ingots. That's why heat rods or uh, flame drops are fairly important because we need, we need a bunch of those. Um, and it makes one heat rod. Then the linking device is with four gold, two emeralds, two gems, and an ender pearl. This is where things start to get expensive. This mod is really a very uh, late game, end game type mod because a lot of the stuff, uh, that, uh, all the recipes are just really expensive. Um, and then finally the collecting device is kind of upside down to the other one. Four golds, this time three ender pearls, and two gems. And those those each make eight, so you'll you'll need to make uh, one of these recipes will get you basically eight machines worth of these objects, which is kind of nice. So we have our eight matrix destructor here, and uh, if we click on it, here's the GUI for it. We see uh, this first up here is related to the balance. Uh, it's pure. Um, again, I'll go over to that later. It doesn't really matter in the beginning, but we'll we'll talk about that later. Um, you see, there's a note here: ten UBMRU. Uh, turns into one MRU. So for we have 6366 uh, matrix energy. That's going to turn into uh, 637 MRU. Uh, and then down here is how much is actually stored. So there's zero of a thousand. Um, 
the way we uh, use it is we take our soul stone and right click on it. Oh, sorry, no, we take the soul stone and put it up in this slot here. And that links it to us. And now you see it's draining my UBMRU and turning it into MRU. And this is going to slowly fill up with energy. Um, and so the more stuff you kill, the more energy you'll have available. So this type of power setup would be kind of nice if you had like a like a spawner, uh, a, a mob spawner type of setup going on. And now you can see the soul stones kind of sitting in the middle. So that is uh, our power source, the very first power source that we have. Now we need something to use the power that we're making. And that first one is the radiating chamber. This is a, a very, very important building that uh, is going to take you're going to be able to make a lot of things with this structure. Um, and again, this is where things get really expensive. <laughs> it's made of uh, one heat rod, a core, a collecting device, two of these eyes of absorption, and four diamond plates. And we come back here. A diamond plate is made with two diamonds. So this whole recipe is going to need eight diamonds, um, four irons, and a gem. And then the other thing was the eye of absorption, which is another pearl, four gems, and four irons. Um, so you need a lot of pearls, a lot of diamonds, a lot of emeralds for this mod. And that's going to make this radiating chamber. Um, now you can see this has uh, some interfaces here. There's a slot up here, two slots here, and another slot here. Um, this top area is for messages. So right now it says there's no bound gem. So it's in red, so there's a problem. Um, we'll go into that in a second. This here, uh, uh, the blue line is, says it's frozen. This is again with the balance. This has to do with the, the balance level of the source, the power source. Um, I'll talk about that later. And then we, it, it can store its own, it has its own reservoir, so it can store 5,000 MRUs. Um, now that problem, we need to fix that. So we need some way to uh, link this uh, device with the power source. And we do that with these bound gems. So this is how you link devices together. A bound gem is made with an elemental gem and a nether quartz. So you'll, be, you'll have to be able to go to the nether uh, again before you can really even start this mod. Um, and so we have these bound gems. And uh, I, have, I have a couple that I already bound, but I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So if they're already bound, you just shift, right click, and it'll, it'll unbind it. And the way a bound gem works is you take it over to your power source and you right click. And it makes a little jingle noise. That tells you that it's bound. So now, see that when you first make them, they don't have any information, but when you bind them, it says what it's bound to. Um, now you take your bound gem, and you, you don't want to click on it with, with the bound gem in your hand, because then it would just link it to that thing. But you right click, and you put it up in this slot with a gem imprint, and it has a gem. So now it's working, and it has the same balance as the other thing in there. Um, now it's sucked all the MRU out of our matrix destructor. And the new problem is that there's no MRU in tile. So that means there's no energy left in the thing that this is linked to. So if we go back to the uh, destructor, you see there's nothing left in here because my soul stone is, is empty. I haven't killed enough things. But we do have 636 energy um, to play with. And uh, the way you, you use this thing is, uh, again, you can look in the book for recipes, but you'll put up to two items in here uh, these are the input slots, and then the output slot is this one. So, the next um, block that's going to be really useful is the magician table. Uh, the magician table is another producing structure, just like the uh, the radiating chamber back there, and uh, that's that's what this is right here, this purple thing, and it's made in this recipe: three iron frames, uh, one collecting device, a core. This time, the new ones are two emerald plates and two obsidian plates. Um, the emerald plates are made from two emeralds. It's like the diamond plate, except you replace the diamonds with emeralds. Um, so we'll need two of those, and then we'll need two obsidian plates, which is made by four obsidians around a magic fortified frame. Magic fortified frame is made from magical fortified glass and magical fortified stone. And that makes three frames for this one recipe. And... The glass and stone are made in the radiating chamber. So you see, like I said before, we get stone and, and iron um, makes the magic fortified stone, and glass and iron makes fortified glass. Let's actually, you know what? Let's let's uh, I'll show you that with the other one because these are not powered, is why they're not working. So if I take this back 
to our radiating chamber, which has a little bit of power in it. I don't know if this is going to be enough. We'll put a stone up here and an iron down there. Oh, uh, yeah, look, it barely used any. We get four magic fortified stones. And something else you might notice, this, MRU Corruption. You get a negative status effect when you use these things. So the radiating chamber, the magician table, a lot of the devices produce radiation. Um, and that will build up on your character. And it doesn't really do much of anything until you get about, I've heard, about eight minutes worth. So um, as long as you stand next to one of these things that's emitting radiation, you'll, you'll accumulate radiation. So it starts at a couple of seconds, and then when you stand in it, the counter goes up instead of down. And once that counter gets to about eight minutes, I've heard that uh, negative things start to happen, although I've never done that myself. It's really not been a big deal. Just don't hang out next to these things for too long when you're making things with them. So that's our ma uh, magician table. And uh, this has a similar interface as before. We've got a slot for a bound gem. This is the output slot up here. And it has five input slots this time. And again, there's a remark about balance and then the, um, the messages uh, frame there. And it can, again, store 5,000 energy as well. And the magician table is used to make a, a, a wide variety of things. If you go back to the book and uh, look at magician table crafts, this bottom left one, um, it shows you how to make a lot of different things. So you can see the configurations too. You remember the five slots? And it tells you the, how much MRU it needs. And uh, if you look at these things through any eye, it'll actually tell you uh, how much time it takes too. So let's back out of there. And if we go. to magic fortified plate is one of the things. Oops. Oh no, I need to do the um gotta go through recipes. So I have to do it like this. Here we go. So this is a magician table craft. It just uses a stone, makes a plate, and uh, it takes 10 MRU and it's instant. So it it tells you the timing, which is kinda nice. Alright. So that's the magician table and the radiating uh, chamber. Both of those are very, very useful. You're going to be using those quite a lot. You might want to make two of each of those if you have the uh, materials to do so. Um, now that we have those machines, we have our uh, power source and a way to use the power. We can make research book tier three. And that's very simply made by sticking your research book tier two into the magician table. And after some time and energy, it spits out uh, the new research book which has, if we go up, now it added two more tabs. And uh, this third tab, it starts at that object for whatever reason, but you hit up and it goes back to the main page. This has a whole boatload of new things too. This looks like it's focused mostly on um, wands and maces and like objects and things that you can hold. And there's a couple of power generators as well, but we'll get into this sort of stuff in, in later videos. Um, there's also this tab, the Ender Star. Uh, that's got some really advanced machines, and this is where your Mitra line is used. Um, I'll make probably separate videos for each one of these objects because they're fairly complex. Um, but this is a really interesting tab. It's got a lot of great stuff on it. But we will go over that in a later video. All right, so we have our power source, our machines that use the power. We got research book all the way up to level three. And uh, I think that's going to be it for this first video. Uh, that's a nice introduction into Essential Craft 3's mechanics and buildings. So stay tuned for more videos uh, from this mod. It's a very, very cool mod. There's just not a lot of information about it. So I'm trying to uh, put that information out there to hopefully make things a little bit easier so you don't have to find things out the hard way like I did. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see you again.